We now turn our attention to an interesting inquiry relating to two business method technologies to underscore the importance of drafting patent applications and how the drafting of patent application has a pivotal effect on the submission and review of statutory subject matter. Let's take another look at the Bilski claim and the Bilski patent application. Earlier in this presentation, we discussed the particular steps involved in the Bilski claim. We won't review that, but what is interesting, I believe, in the Bilski patent application is that the disclosure of the Bilski patent application essentially includes the description of and the providing of four mathematical equations. There are no figures, there are no machines that are introduced in this process. There is not a computer that is described. The description is essentially the discussion of the problem of of managing the consumption risk of a commodity by a commodity provider at a fixed price. The equations include First of all, the energy bill equation, equation one. Secondly, a or representation of the market of energy consumers. Another equation for the market of energy consumers that identifies their counter risk position. And then finally, a fixed bill that incorporates the understanding of the counter risk position the fixed bill is the instrument for initiating the series of transaction as per the last element of the lead independent claim for the Bilski application. That's the extent of the Bilski disclosure. Now contrast the arguably business method patent application submitted only five months after the Bilski patent application. On September the 12th, 1997, inventors Perry Hartman, Jeff Bezos, Shell Kafan, and Joel Spiegel of Seattle, Washington submitted a patent application for a method and system for placing a purchase order via a communications network. As we have reviewed the Bilski claim, let's take a look at the claim for the Bezos one-click patent. The one-click claim calls for a method for placing an order for an item comprising under the control of a client system, displaying information identifying the item, and in response to only a single action being performed, sending a request to order the item along with an identifier of a purchaser of the item to a server system. Under control of a single action ordering component of the server system, receiving the request, then retrieving additional information previously stored for the purchaser, identified by the identifier in the received request, then generating an order to purchase the requested item for the purchaser identified by the identifier in the received request using a retrieved additional the retrieved additional information and then fulfilling the generated order to complete purchase of the item thus as a result of these steps the item is ordered without using a shopping cart ordering model This one-click process is a key ingredient of the Amazon.com website. As you can see here on a recent capture of an Amazon website screen is the function buy with one click. Clearly, this is a patent application directed to performing a particular business method. This business method is a process that Amazon uses successfully and deems extremely valuable in the performance of its business. The Bezos one-click patent has a detailed description that is significantly different from that of the Bilski patent application. Even the title itself, Method and System for Placing a Purchase Order via Communications Network, distinguishes the Bezos patent from that of Bilski. A review of the figures. Note that each one of these figures is particularly described in the Bezos one-click patent. Figure 2, for example, is a block diagram illustrating an embodiment of the present invention, having a client system, a server system, and the communications between the two. Figure 3 shows a flow diagram of a routine that enables single action ordering for a customer. Figure 5 further shows a flow diagram for, of a routine which processes a single action order from a long-term order or short-term order uh, open for the user. Figure 6 provides another diagram for a routine for generating a single action order summary page that the user sees when they perform the single action ordering. And then Figure 7 is a flow diagram of a routine that implements an expedited order selection algorithm to support the one-click process. 
Every one of these diagrams is specifically described in the specification, which provides the support for the specific claims of the one-click patent, which claims recite a machine that performs a specific operation or set of machines, the client system, the server system, and the one-click ordering that occurs between the two. The one-click patent originally issued on September the 28th, 1999. The application was used by Amazon to sue rival bookseller Barnes & Noble, and Amazon has further licensed the technology to Apple Computer. Amazon one-click patent came under fire over the years from, from critics who questioned whether such a broad technology should be patented at all. In fact, a re-examination was triggered back in 2006 when a New Zealand actor, an actor known for his roles in Lord of the Rings, raised questions about the novelty and non-obviousness of the one-click claim. In response to the re-examination petition, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office granted a re-examination proceeding. On July 13, 2010, only two weeks after the Supreme Court's Bilski v. Kappos decision, the United States Patent Office issued a re-examination certificate following the ex parte re-examination, which lasted over four years. In the ex parte re-examination certificate, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office documented its review of over 275 patent documents and over 680 publications and Internet resources. In the re-examination certificate, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office required the modification to the independent claims of the one-click patent. The modification included merely that the step displaying information identifying the item be modified to displaying information identifying the item purchasable through a shopping cart model. In essence, it is fair to say there was an inconsequential modification to the one-click claim as it affects the protection needs and licensing needs of Amazon. In contrasting the two patent applications of Bilski and the Bezos one-click, it is clear that fundamental differences exist between the two applications in their drafting and their success through the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Both applications relate to methods of conducting business. Bilski patent application is clearly abstract in both its claims and the specification. The one-click patent discloses and claims specific machines and interactions between machines to perform a defined process. Moreover, the one-click patent has successfully weathered most rigorous examination and re-examination to result in a confirmation of patentable subject matter that is novel, non-obvious, and for which the issued claim are enabled by the specification. With what we now know concerning the background, the decision, the ramifications, and the comparison with the one-click patent, we'll now discuss a strategic response that an applicant can make in preparing and pursuing patents within the United States that reflect the considerations of the Bilski decision. Our next focus relates to a strategic response to the Bilski decision. At an initial level, a response to the Bilski decision includes strategically using provisional patent applications. In other words, making sure that at least provisional patent applications are filed that satisfy the prohibition against abstract ideas and that, as much as possible, comply with the machine or transformation test to ensure that subsequently filed utility applications can properly lay claim to the early date that a provisional patent application may provide. In addition, it is appropriate to consider the complementary or collaborative effect of patent protection with trade secrets and copyright and to use best practices to provide such protection. In other words, there are certain aspects of a technology or a way of doing business that may be more properly protected by copyright or may be more properly protected by trade secret. On the 27th of July, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office has now provided interim guidance for determining subject matter eligibility for process claims in view of the Bilski v. Kappa's decision. The discussion that follows highlights the guidance that these provisions provide. 
Per the guidelines, the machine or transformation test remains an investigative tool and, according to the USPTO, is a useful starting point for determining whether a claimed invention is a process under Section 101. But, says the USPTO, in responding to the U.S. Supreme Court decision, the machine or transformation test is not the sole test for determining subject matter eligibility. Interim guidance provides additional factors to aid in the determination of whether a claimed method is an abstract idea. According to the guidelines, examiners are to issue Section 101 rejection only in extreme cases. Instead, patentability is to be decided by Sections 102 for novelty, Section 103 for obviousness, and Section 112 of the Patent Statute for Enabling Description. The Supreme Court decision in Bilski, according to the guidance, underscored that the text of Section 101 is expansive and business methods are not categorically outside of Section 101's scope. The guidance provides a list of factors to be considered in analyzing a claim for evaluating whether a method claim is directed to an abstract idea. The guidance specifically states that not every factor will be relevant in every situation. Moreover, no factor is to be considered conclusive by itself. The weight that is to be accorded to each factor will vary based upon the facts of the application, and the guidance directs examiners to look at the facts of, that, of every application. In the guidance, there are factors that are weighing toward eligibility and factors weighing against eligibility. The guidance says that factors weighing toward eligibility include recitation of a machine or transformation, either express or inherent. Examples of such are where the machine or transformation is particular, or where a machine or transformation meaningfully limits the execution of steps in a claimed process. Also, where a machine implements the claimed steps. In these situations, the recitation is considered proper statutory subject matter. Where the article being transformed is particular in the claim or where the article undergoes a change in state or thing. For example, objectively different function or use of a particular article would be statutory subject matter. And then further, where the article being transformed is an object or substance. In these instances, the recitation of the machine or transformation is either express or implicit, and therefore patentable subject matter exists. Also, where a claim is directed toward applying a law of nature, where a law of nature is particularly applied and where the application of the law of nature meaningfully limits the execution of the steps are examples of, of this satisfaction of the statutory subject matter requirement. And then finally, where the claim is more than a mere statement of a concept, such as where the claim describes a particular solution to a problem to be solved, or where the claim implements a concept in some tangible way, or where the performance of the steps is observable and verifiable. In these instances, there are factors weighing toward eligibility of patentable subject matter. Conversely, the guidance says that factors weighing against eligibility include the situation where there is no recitation of a machine or transformation, either express or inherent. Also, where there is insufficient recitation of a machine or transformation. For example, where the involvement of the machine or transformation with the steps is merely nominally insignificantly or tangentially related to the performance of the step. For example, data gathering or merely reciting a field in which the method is intended to be applied. Also, where a machine is generically recited such that it covers any machine capable of performing the claim steps weighs against patentability as an insufficient recitation. A machine that is merely an object on which the method operates doesn't satisfy the machine or transformation test. And further, transformation involves only a change in position or location of the article or where the article is merely a general concept. In these situations, insufficient recitation exists for the patent claim. Where the claim is not directed to an application of a law of nature, for example, where the claim would monopolize a natural force or patent a scientific fact. Examples may be by claiming every mode of producing an effect that a law of nature may produce. Also, where a law of nature is applied in merely a subjective determination weighs against patentability. And further, where a law of nature is merely nominally or insignificantly or tangentially related to the performance of the steps. In these situations, the claim is not directed to an application of the law of nature. 
and further, where the claim is a mere statement of a general concept. For example, such situations include the use of a concept as it expressed in a method would m effectively grant a monopoly over the concept where both known and unknown uses of the concept are covered and can be performed through any existing or future devised machinery or even without any apparatus. Further, where the claim only states a problem to be solved or where the general concept is disembodied, that is, there is no physical association with the machine or transformation and further where the mechanism by which the steps are implemented is subjective or imperceptible. In these situations, the examiners are guided to state that the claim, to review the claim as a mere statement of a general concept and such ways against eligibility under Section 101 of the Patent Statute. So there you have it. In this presentation, Bilski v. Kapos, the U.S. Supreme Court balances protection and prosperity. We have reviewed the constellation of recent federal court patent decisions intending to pursue a tech bull market, the background of the Bilski v. Capos decision, the United States Supreme Court decision and the relating opinions, the implications of the Bilski decision across industry sectors, the implications of the Bilski decision for international patent applicants, ramifications of the decision for issued patent and pending patent applications, how the Bilski decision may affect patent values, a comparison between the Bilski and Warsaw patent application for hedging energy costs and the Bezos one-click patent for purchasing items on the Internet, and then finally a strategic response for both the applicant and the response of the United States Patent and Trademark Office in examining patent applications in the post-Bilski era. I want to thank you for participating in this special business briefing on a defining moment in U.S. patent law and welcome you to contact our firm, Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers, in the event that we can be of service or you have a question regarding this presentation. Thank you very much.